In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. To Allah alone do I submit and seek refuge in. It is he who is the reveal of all truths, the send of all prophets, and the creator of all living things. We thank Allah for coming to us in the person of the great Mahdi, Master Fahd Muhammad. We thank him for coming and raising up his messenger, Messiah, and his exalted servant, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we're thankful to them both for giving birth spiritually, right. mentally, right. to a servant of God. That's right. That when Allah thought of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, he thought of his helper, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Right. We are honored to serve as his East Coast regional representative and to attempt to strive to pastor a region, yes, sir. a people, to give guidance, but to be a defender of him who's innocent of all false charges yes, by the satanic Jews, all false charges by weak boned, weak spined right. Negroes. That's right, that's right. But they're still the people of God right. whom he loves. Right and whom he fights for. That's right. And so we love them too. Yes, sir. And without Minister Farrakhan's personification of love, I wouldn't know how to love a Negro. That's right. That's right. I wouldn't even know how to love myself right. the way that I do. Right. So I'm thankful to Elijah and Farrakhan for the example of the love of self by teaching us the knowledge of self. All praises due to Allah. I wish to greet you this morning, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Yes, we say it in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you for being present this morning. And to all who preceded us on the program, we're very, very thankful. We're thankful for our young student in the ministry, Brother Joshua Muhammad, and what he is today, he will not be tomorrow and the next day. And that's for each of us, to Brother Arthur, to Brother Sunni, to all of the brothers in ministry. Ministry is not just words. Ministry must be more action. That's right. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to me one time, 90% of the people's problems could be solved from the rostrum. However, 75% of your work is off the rostrum. And so, my dear family, I want us to understand that we are here to represent an innocent man who false charges continuously come to his door. But the subject today is yes, seek refuge yes. in Allah. Yes, sir. We're in a period of intense darkness. That's right. We're in a period of lies. We're in a period of people who will turn on the man of God. That's right. That's right. Us, That's if you're not careful. So we need to be watchful of our own thoughts, right. our own mind, right. our own spirit. And only by seeking refuge in the only one that can save us, right. then we guard our minds, we guard our hearts, we guard our souls, we guard our spirit. That's right. So we thank Allah yes, for last Sunday, yes, yes, for the blessing of the Holy Day of Atonement. Right. And for all of us that came out to all of the mosques and study groups in the East Coast region from Trenton all the way to Canada, Everybody's numbers was up, 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 up for the holy day, the 23rd anniversary of the Million Man March. Right. But what happened this week? Why the numbers not up? See, when we don't worship Allah the way we should, and we worship personality whom Allah gives, then we fall short of the potential development that Allah God wants each of us to achieve. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan implores his followers that follow him to Elijah and to God himself. Don't horn in on me only. We are a nation. I have helpers. Focus on them. Focus on yourselves. Focus on the people so that the nation grows. So we're thankful this morning whomever is present, yes, sir. we're going to talk to you as if we're talking to thousands. That's right. Because you represent that. That's 
And you are the best, the powerful, and the righteous. But we want us to be mindful. The day of personality worship is over. Every one of us must be connected one to another. And the only one that we really need to lift up is God himself. But we must become acquainted with the knowledge of God. And to realize that when you walked into the mosque, God walked into the mosque. That's right. I want to thank Brother Arthur, our student captain, Brother Richard, our new and upcoming soldier, Brother Jamar, and Brother Stephen, and others who were here. You see, we got these new screens up. New things happen. All praises due to Allah. So we can get rid of all of these wires and everything else. Modernization is good for you. Is that right? But there's a scripture that says, Allah is the same today as he was yesterday. And he changes not. Yet, the God evolves. What it, mean, what it could mean is that when he doesn't change, meaning he's still there for us. We can rely upon him. Is that right? Every morning you wake up, there's air to breathe. Come on, talk back to me now. There's sun or clouds or rain. You can rely on the four seasons. What you can't rely upon is this unusual weather. And that's a lost chastisement coming out of the mouth of his servant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, being answered by Elijah, the son of man, on high communicating to the Son of Man below. Yes, sir. That's right. Oh, oh, on this day, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan went against those who said it's going to be rain that day. Right. Rain was in the forecast for Sunday, October the 14th, for the 23rd anniversary of the Million Man March. Rain was in the forecast. Take over that. Take over that. But there was no rain. Right. There was sunshine. Right. Right. Now what there was, was that cold coming off of that Lake behind us. That's one thing that was going on. Oh, a brother was out there just freezing himself off to death. But I said, if the minister can do it, I can do it. I ain't going to tell you no lie. I thought, brother, my brother told me, he said, brother, if you need your coat and your hat, because you brought it, just let me know and I'll go back and get it. I thought about it a few times. But I held strong because the apostle was holding strong. You see? All praise is due to Allah. And there was a little heat blowing, but the heat was blowing low. I don't know how it went up high. And it wasn't until two and a half hours later, the minister said, a little chilly up here. Praise be to Allah. Allah blessed him two and a half hours strong in that kind of weather by the grace of Allah. The vibrancy of our beloved minister huh? was on point. Unabounding by the grace of God. And a great thing happened on that day. So before I go any further, I was blessed and honored to have dinner with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I went just to greet, because you don't know. You don't take his, his presence for granted. He doesn't have to receive me. He's given me a responsibility, and that's enough. He's seen me a lot of times. He can say, our oh, brother feast, not this trip. I saw you last one. Praise be to Allah. But he had a group the night before, and he said, well, that group can't return. So a new group for the day, and I'm happy to be part of that new group. Praise be to Allah. To be able to sit with him, and he was nothing but a beam of light and smiles the entire time. Maybe you might have thought something. He was up there two and a half hours. The wind was blowing. People had on coats. People had on hats. We know that the minister was a spent shell. Wrong! Don't you ever count out God. Minister was beaming. Huh? I mean, he was a ray of light at the dinner table. All praises due to Allah. And he was happy, 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 happy. He was happy the entire time. I kept saying he was happy because I was waiting for you to be happy and applaud for his happiness. He smiled the entire time. He was very pleased with what Allah blessed us with that day. And he said these words. He said, well, we didn't get everything we wanted. But we got what God wanted us to have. 
So on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I want to extend to you his loving greetings to you and your family of Assalamu alaikum. Well, sir, please return the greetings from the FOI, sir. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you may be seated. Just to be in the mosque to receive that greeting is a blessing. Just to be present to receive the greeting from the messenger of God in our midst today. That's right. Huh? You say, well, I thought the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was the messenger of God. How was Minister Farrakhan the messenger of God? Because Allah says in the Holy Quran, in Surat al-Taha, huh? he says to us, the 20th chapter of the Quran, there'll be two messengers from before my face that I will send to Pharaoh. Moses and Aaron. That's Elijah and who? Farrakhan. Huh? Yes. One has been exalted to God of the universe. That's right. So he leaves another one in his seat yes. who now sits as the messenger of God. Hallelujah. And we thank Allah right. for his presence. He thanks Allah for yours. Right. The minister, Minister Farrakhan, loves us. This is why when I give donations to people in the street and in the community, I tell them, people I don't even know, Minister Farrakhan loves you. I ain't met one that didn't straighten up yet. What? Farrakhan, yes. Because I wouldn't have known to do anything for you if he didn't do a lecture entitled addressing our attitude toward the poor. And that inspired me and touched my heart by the grace of Almighty God, Allah. Our subject this morning, seek refuge in Allah. Brothers and sisters, to seek is to earnestly search for something. Refuge is a safe place from harm or danger. Allah is the true and living God. Coming from the word il Allah, the oneness of God. All good thoughts, all good deeds come from the all wise living God, Allah. Huh? He is the creator of you and me. And in the Quran, Allah says, only he can forgive our sins all together. Not the prophet, not the messenger, not the Messiah, not the Christ. They have a purpose. But Allah can forgive sins all together. So then we don't worship Minister Farrakhan. We don't worship Elijah Muhammad. Though Elijah Muhammad is in a very powerful position placed there by God. He didn't place himself there. Huh? His humility, his love, his obedience, his commitment, his dedication earned him a place at the right hand of God. His sacrifice, his being lied on. Huh? Well, if he's earned a place, what do you think about his servant, his helper? who's walking in the footsteps when Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, you're going to be reviled of men for my name's sake. Right. If you're going to follow me, the historical Jesus, but coming to the contemporary one, you're going to be evil spoken of That's right. by those around you. That's right. Does Minister Farrakhan have enemies? Yes, sir. Yes, in every city and every town. But Allah controls every one of them by his permission. Ooh, so when you know that Allah has put an enemy for you in every city, in every town, written up in the Quran, but then Allah says, but I control every one of them. Who should you seek refuge in? Who should you seek your help from but Allah himself? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is recorded of saying, if 10,000 was outside my door, I would have no fear for them. Then he's recorded of saying, paraphrasing, if Allah left me for a, middle, a, a millisecond, I'd be a babbling fool. He would not be himself. That's a man. Those are men seeking refuge in Allah. That's powerful. That's what you and me need to do. 
right now. We need to stop talking of what the minister's able to do and realize what you and me are able to do as a result of what he's able to do by Allah's permission. Allah came for every one of us. He left the holy city of Mecca and came into the hells and bounds of North America. Huh? For as lightning shineth from the east unto the west, so shall the coming or the arrival of who? The son of man be. A man born from a man, but not ordinary man. God in man. You're not ordinary woman. You're not ordinary man. And we got to stop messing up one another's lives because we take each other as ordinary. That's why we call each other the N-word. Huh? I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you. Mm. It's a cliche. But then you got it in the back. Smile, B. Smile, B. See, because we're ordinary. But when you see yourself extraordinary, then you know that the B word is not something affectionate. Just because you can make me laugh at it or make yourself laugh at it. Huh? MF is not a good thing to be called. Calling your children little MFs is not a good thing for them to be called. You understand what I'm saying? Sister to sister calling each other a bitch is not a good thing to be called. Bitch is your first name. Bitch is your middle name. Bitch is your last name. That's all you are. I'm a good bitch. I'm a ride or die bitch. Huh? I'm the right bitch. No, you're not a bitch. You are the second self of God. You are the woman of God. So stop referring to yourself as a female dog so that the man and the world may treat you accordingly. All praise is due to Allah. But to us as men, even when the woman has come right, we've come wrong to them. Don't get quiet now. Even when they've been right, been on the Surat al Mustaqim, we want to bring them down to a lower level. Because the men of this world don't desire a righteous woman. But the men of God desires a righteous woman. Men of God desire righteous women. And women should desire righteous men. And we want to raise righteous children. That's why we thank Allah for our Muhammad University of Islam. It is young, it is re-emerging, but it is here, and we're going to make righteous products of our young boys and girls by the grace of Allah, and we're coming for your children. We want your children to be a part of Muhammad University of New York City in the very near future. So bring them and join on to the ones that are presently here. But we're thankful to the parents, the Muslim parents, that have enrolled their children in Muhammad University of Islam, New York City. Joining our Muhammad University of Islam at our headquarters in Chicago. Our Muhammad University of Islam in Newark, New Jersey. Houston, Texas. Washington, D.C. Baltimore, Maryland. Indianapolis, Indiana. So forth and so on. And yes, education is a struggle. But we got to learn this morning, when you seek refuge in Allah, struggle is redemptive. Stop running from struggle and stop talking about life is a struggle. Yes, it was a struggle to get up this morning. But you made it up. And when you got up, you had something to thank God for. What are we complaining about? You know what's a real struggle? When you are dead. The brain is dead. Heart is dead. And you're laid out like cats a quiddle on a table. And somebody's got a tool putting formaldehyde up in you. And you're double dead. Then you're in a casket and you're six feet under. That's a struggle that you can't overcome. He ain't no Harry Potter wand going to raise you up out of no grave. And ain't no magical prophet coming or Messiah that's going to turn the graves and bring you with formaldehyde in your backside up out of that grave. You're gone. We got to stop teaching the people these weak teachings. I'm going to see you up yonder. We're going to see you up yonder. We're going to see you up yonder. Stop.
stop lying to the people. Teach them the truth. Job said that which goes down in the earth shall come up no more. And Jesus says, I come not to change the law of the prophets, but fulfill them. With all due respect to your thinking, I'm sorry. No one has ever come back from the dead. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked the question, has anyone ever come back? No one has ever come back to tell us what it's like on the other side. Because you can't come back. If you just deal with 6,000 years of the history of the white man's race, where's all them people that have been dead? Come on now. We've been here longer than 6,000 years, right? If you deal with the 50,000 years the black man was down, 50,000 years ago, we were put down into the jungles of East Asia. 50,000. Where's all them people at? If we deal with the 16,000 years going back down, when the Indians came across the Bering Straits into this part called North America, where's those people at? If we go to Zenthanthropus, whom the white man found, huh? Two million years old, where's them people at? Is there going to be something that's going to raise people from two million years ago? They wouldn't even want to come back. My generations, my genealogy lives for me in the future. That's why this sperm mixed with egg that produces children. And from your children comes your genuflection. That's how you go into the future. They say, I remember your daddy. I remember your mother. Yes, they were a great person. Oh, yes, they were cowards and they turned their back on the messenger of God. May God forever forgive them. I mean, it could be either or. Don't get quiet on me now. I'm just saying. It could go either or. Everybody all right? Yes, sir. So I think a lot from last week. Now, there's a, you know, and I knew this wasn't going to be large enough, but, ah, and I didn't bring my Quran with me. But there are two surahs in the Quran. If someone can bring me a Quran real quick, please. I need a holy Quran. And that are refuge surahs or chapters in the holy Quran. The first one is Surat al Al Falak, the dawn. The second one is Surat al Nas, the men. These are the refuge chapters of the Holy Quran. And in this, Allah is asking us to seek refuge in Him against the mischief of created things. But I want to read it to you. See, look at this. Look at this. See, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a good helper to the Honorable Muhammad, you can't go nowhere without good help. Is there a Quran here? Praise be to Allah. And it didn't float up here without hands. No hands, no Quran. Is that right? Praise be to Allah. Now, when you read your Quran, you should always kiss it from cover to cover. Mm. Mm. I ain't kissing this one because I don't know where it, <laughs> it looked good. And then put it to your forehead and then open it. Yes, praise be to Allah. I mean, it's a nice looking Quran. It might came off the desk. I, I don't mean no harm. Don't nobody get upset with me about your Quran. Praise be to Allah. You kiss it when you get it back. Here we go. Now, let's, 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 let's look at these words real quick here now. Oh, yeah, this is a good one here for you today. We're not going to be long. We're going to be all right. You ready? All right. Look at what Allah says. Refuge chapters now. Huh? A safe place from harm or danger. danger. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn from the evil of that which he created and from the evil of intense darkness when it comes and from the evil of those who cast evil suggestions in firm resolutions and from the evil of the envier when he envies. Now, you, you tell me you don't need refuge in Allah from an envious person. Minister Farrakhan teaches us envy is the mother of murder. And when a person is envious of you, they want your place or position. It's not, it's not, it's not jealousy. They want you, where you are. Wherever you are, they should be there. And they'll murder or assassinate your character or your well-being to get what you have. An envious person is one who does not seek refuge in Allah. 
Because when you seek refuge in Allah, then we are satisfied within ourselves. That I don't need to be anyone else. I don't need someone else's position. I want to serve. I want to help. Just find me somewhere to do the work at. I remember, I remember in Minister Malcolm X's apology to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he says, the apostle, if I can just come back and just sweep the floors, if I can just come back and be the janitor. He didn't want to come back and want no national representative. If I can just come back and just be a part of what I once was. That's how we should all be. None of us should think big of ourselves. I'm not thinking big of myself because of some title. That's just responsibility. I like to see myself as a humble ant. You know why? Because ants, yes, they work together in a collective manner. Yes, ants carry 10 times, 20 times their weight. Yes, they do all of that, but ants get stepped on a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When I grew up, I stepped on them. You stepped on them. Because you wanted to see if they could survive. Especially when you saw an ant hill. You stepped on it. Huh? And when you moved your shoe, might have been one dead, but man, they start going again. Then they go in and they disappear. And then they reappear somewhere else. See, the ant lives another day. It's a humble creature. Close to the earth. All of us should be like that. Humble. No, no, no. No, beloved, I'll do that for you. No, I'll do that for you, beloved. No, I'll do that for you. We want to do it so much for each other, ain't nobody doing nothing. Somebody got to pay the bill around here. So you take care of it this time, beloved, and I'll take care of it the next time. But humility is the order of the day. That's what makes the minister so strong. But we got to seek refuge in Allah from the evil of created things. We don't have time to go on that today. We'll do a part two. But the minister says the created thing that we have to seek refuge in, he says sex is a created thing from God. It's good, but there's mischief in it if it's misused and mishandled. Is that right? All right. Now we go on now to the next refuge prayer, which is the 114th chapter. Surat al-Nas, the men. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of men, the King of men, the God of men, from the evil whisperings of the slinking devil who whispers into the hearts of men from among the jinn and from among the men. We'll break this down at another time the way the minister has broken it down. Because the king of men represents something. The lord of men represents something. But what we must be careful of is the whisperings of the inner jinn. That Satan part of ourselves. Not the white man. We're talking about in the black man that produced the manifestation of the Caucasian race of people. They are the manifestation of what was up inside of us over 66 trillion years ago. When we knew the reality of God, we took God to be ordinary, plain among us. We no longer looked up the way that we once did. We took him to be just like us. So he removed himself from the face of the people. And we've been in search for him until the coming of the great MACD, Master Fahd Muhammad, July 4th in 1930, when he revealed the reality of God in his person. And we once again knew that God is a man. And to make him anything other than that is to make him a lie. There's no other God other than man. Never have been, never will be. All of the great exploits is done at the hands of men, inspired by the originator of the heavens and the earth that gave us brain, and brain calls into existence the operation of this body. He gave us heart to pump blood. Huh? He gave us bone and a skeletal structure, a respiratory system. This is God, man. He makes us in his own image and his own likeness. Not to rival him, but to honor him while we can make screens and we can make buildings and we can make mosques and temples and bricks. Allah made this that makes that. So who's greater? It is the power in us that's responsible for us and the power over us that gives us the power to do what we do. So then I want to seek refuge in that power. 
I want to seek refuge in that being. Because refuge is safety yes. from harm yes. or danger. Huh? It can be a place. It can be a person. If someone is trying to rob you right now, if a good police officer shows up, don't you seek safety from harm and danger? Yes, sir. The more we build our army, FOI, yes, yes, sir. and the more we deploy men in these streets with Peace in the Streets initiative from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, when the people see the FOI now, what do they find? Safety from harm and danger. Our sisters rely upon us and MGT and GCC. When women see you, even though they're acting 14 karat crazy, two both short of being a nut, they find safety from harm and danger when they see you. As long as they see you as you are, they say there's hope for me to be righteous one day. There's hope for me. So never stop being who you are and the garments that you wear. Don't worry about who laughs at you perchance. Worry about those that have hope when they see you. Same with us. We got to believe in ourselves. That's seeking refuge in Allah. We'll go into that further next time. There's a lesson. We always quote it. I just wanted to put it up for you because a lot of you ain't seen Supreme Wisdom lessons. I just want you to know that they exist. Right? It's the, it's, it's, it's the handiwork of Master Fahd Muhammad. And he asked the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, have you learned that your word shall be bond, huh? regardless of whom or what? See, when you seek refuge in Allah, a safe place, a safe reality from harm and danger, we're going to go through trial in life. Have you not learned? He says, yes, word is bond and bond is life, and I shall give my life before my word shall fail. But Minister Farrakhan always exhorts us to the question before the answer, because in the question is wisdom. Have you not learned? What is that? An experience that we must go through constantly. And the problem is we think that we have had enough experiences that we don't need to learn no more. So you've been in the nation 15 years. I've been around 20 years. You know how long I've been here? I've been here when nobody else was here. I've been here before you got here. I've been through it all. No, you have not. Every day we live, we go through it. We heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say to us, he said, I've been in the nation at one time, he said, 60 years, and for all of those years I caught hell. I said, man, that's, that's deep, man. So what are we talking about? Our little 15 years, little 20 years, 25, 30, even if you get to 60 with them, what are we complaining about? Life is a struggle that we will constantly overcome and succeed at overcoming. You know why we don't handle it right? You know why we complain about it? Because we don't seek refuge in God. We seek refuge in warm-blooded relationships that have a purpose to a point, but the best relationship is the relationship with our Creator. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, if you want Allah to talk to you, read the Holy Quran. Read scripture. If you're a Christian, you want God to talk to you, believe in your Bible, why don't you read it more? Rather than just the pastor or the preacher or the bishop or the right reverend teaching to you, why don't you read your own book like the Muslims do every year at Ramadan? We read the Holy Quran for ourselves. 30 days of Sa'um, of fasting, we develop an intimate relationship with God himself. No imam, no mullah, no scholar, no minister, no teacher, just us and Allah after our early morning prayers. I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn. Huh? Master Fahd Muhammad, I seek refuge in you. Mm. Everybody all right? Okay. Praise be to Allah. So we're going to go through experiences, is that right? In life that are going to try us. That's how you're going to learn that your word is going to be born. We accept it. We recite it and we got our ex. We accept it and we got Muhammad. Oh, one word that praise and one praise much. Some got it because we did work. Others got it because you're in the work so that you would do the work. 
And how many of us got the name Muhammad and you ashamed to use the name? The minister warned his followers about that. Having the name Muhammad and you ashamed to use it. Use your Muhammad. Use it. That's what you got it for. We only got one life and we're still running around with the slave master's name. Our family name. I'm not trying to mock you. I'm trying to encourage us. I had a slave name just like you. But I like walking with Muhammad when I got it. And when I didn't have Muhammad and I had my ex, I loved my ex. Everywhere I went, I was Brother Kevin X. And I loved it. Got plaques with Kevin X. I'm trying to find those plaques so I can remember that. But you know what I mean? I was on it that I'm no longer part of this world order. Huh? Now you get Muhammad and we act like we've arrived. Wrong! Minister Farrakhan says when we receive an award, when you receive a plaque, that's for us to continue to do more work moving into the future. Not stop as though, oh yes, we've done it now. I am, I am the, uh, the head Negro now. Look at what they've given me. I put this up on my wall. No, brothers and sisters. That's not what receiving of gifts or awards are for. They're for us to do future work. So have you not learned that your word shall be bond regardless of whom or what, regardless of person or persons? Stop talking about, oh, they treat me bad in the mosque. No, no, no. They're not supposed to. No, from the um, sentinels at the door to the check to the signing post, the check post. No, you're supposed to be treated beautifully, received with a smile. But if you weren't, you didn't come in for them. So you come on in, take a little bump. All right, no problem. Praise be to Allah. May I find the lieutenant in charge, because y'all got lieutenants here, don't you? Yes, yes. I want to talk to one of the lieutenants. If one thing they know about the nation of Islam, there's lieutenants. Before they even call a captain, they say there's a lieutenant. Lieutenant told me to do it. Yeah, they, they know that's, that's known in the nation. Find someone in charge and share your experience that that person could be made better. Then don't do to them now what they did to you if that's what was done. Don't lie on them now. See, and what they did, they just roughed me up real bad. Now, see, now you're lying now. You're lying now. You're lying. They might could have done better. But we thank Allah for the good sentinels here. We thank Allah for the good servants that are among us. We're not a perfect people. But we're learning to perfect ourselves. By what? Seeking refuge in Allah. So you do the same. So have you not learned that your word shall be bond regardless of whom or what? All right? Everything all right there? Yes, sir. Because it's disturbing me with the word. Everything good? Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. They're trying to make something happen. All right. Everybody good? Yes, sir. All right. Let's move this along. Brothers and sisters, we're facing enemies who hate the message of Minister Farrakhan from last Sunday. And I mean, it was a beautiful message. Magnificent. He did more for women in the Me Too movement than they could themselves. I'm talking about women of all ethnicities. All. He did more for them than they could themselves. How do I know? We heard from the Twitter commander, Brother Jesse Muhammad, the responses that he read to the minister. And I mean the people were on point, saying, I've never seen women the way you describe them. I never saw Aretha other than a singer, but the way you describe queen of soul, soul from God, huh? Of all souls. I never looked at her like that. Even one former pimp told the minister through social media, you making it hard for us out here. Because the women don't want to get on the streets no more, in other words. And if I was still in the business, I would come for you. Yeah, 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 that's nice to know that. Come on, baby. No, no, not in a bad way. Because we'll just convert them. 
So we made the minister laugh. We said, but minister, you making it hard for a pimp to pay the rent. And the minister just cracked up in his whole heart. See, that's a righteous man doing his work. We're supposed to make it hard. Because ain't no man supposed to warehouse no woman. And ain't no woman supposed to have such low self-esteem and self-determination that you allow a man to use you like that. You understand? You don't call no man daddy. He ain't your daddy. And even if he is your daddy, you don't treat daddy like that. That's to a point. Huh? So we got to grow up, brothers, because men of this world have messed up women. Allah says it like this in the Quran. Corruption has appeared on the land and the sea on account of what? Men's hands have wrought. So when women rise, the world is going to be changed. And it's not going to be changed until your full resurrection that fulfills the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Where there are no decent women, there can and will be no decent men. So when you are made decent, when you are made good, you make men good. Because they, they can't have access to you. You understand? And I'm not just talking sexual. No. I'm talking, you know, sometimes a man just want to get you to cook for him all the time. Want you to clean for him. Want you to give him your money. Want you to give him your ride. Some men don't even want no sex from you. They just want your car. If they can get your Cadillac Escalade, man, they're happy as a church mouse in a corner eating cheese, man. They're going about their business and never see you again. They don't, they don't want no sex from you. They go get that from somebody else, but they want your Escalade. They want your BMW truck. They want your Denali, Yukon Denali, GMC. That's what they want. They want you to keep giving them, them that money. You know, you get a man, you, you want to keep him so you enable him. Let me take care of him. No, that's not how you take care of him. You take care of him like a, like a, a, a mother bird takes care of his little chick birds. When they're born, when it pass, get him at the edge. Push him out. Either you fly or you die. Tell the man, get up and get up out of here today and go to work. Look at these words. Oh, you who believe, respond to Allah and his messenger when he calls you to that which gives you what? Life. And know that Allah comes in between a man and what? His heart. And that uh, to him, you will be what? Gathered. And guard yourselves against an affliction. Here we go. Which may not what? Smite those of you exclusively who are what? Unjust. And know that Allah is severe in requiting. This is the point I want us to see. Allah's chastisement is, 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 is among us today. It may smite some of us. If Allah's chastisement against America for her errant ways takes one of our loved ones, will you still love God? I want you to think on that. If Allah takes your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, your aunt, your great-grandma, your grandchild, grandchildren, in his chastisement against evil. He's written of it. Guard yourself against a day. How do you guard yourself against a chastisement that may not smite the unjust only, but the righteous may get caught up in it? How do you guard yourself? If you, if you seek refuge in God, trust in him, then you will believe in him no matter what. Allah you gave, and Allah is your will to take. But if you think, if we think, rather, as parents, we put these children here, that's our problem. Allah says in the Holy Quran, I created you in the womb of your mother. That humbles the parents. And it gives ammunition to the children for the parents that have been telling them for years, I brought you here. And if you don't listen to me, I'll take you out. Tell them, Allah created me in the womb of that woman, or in your womb. So the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, mommy and daddy. Yeah, you're right, the Lord doth give and take away, but I'm gonna put some spankology on that backside until the Lord take you away. <laughs> so I'm not telling you to re rebel against your parents, no, but what we're telling parents is stay humble because God is in charge. 
And the same Allah that we as parents must seek refuge in is the same one these children in the room must learn to seek refuge in Allah even as babies. Stop treating them as children because they are a child. That's why we have a Muhammad University of Islam. We give to the young babies university level teaching that grows them up into God so that when they are a young adolescent they are giants in their thinking. Giants and the ability to become producing men and women at young ages. We got them in the mosque right now. We got young entrepreneurs in the mosque right now. And they came in and met with me last summer. They said, Brother Minister, we need a meeting with you. Two young MGT, junior MGT. We need a meeting with you, Minister. I said, no problem. So the one that I thought was going to talk to me in the meeting, who was selling her product, wasn't the one talking. She had a representative. The other young sister was doing the talking. And minister, we called for a meeting with you because I wanted to talk to you about sister and her product. And they went and told me about it. And I said, so what can I do to serve you? What you can do? What do you think you can do, brother minister? I said, my God. <laughs> so I think that I can go and make an announcement. Good, we would like that. Would you like that, sister? Good. Thank you, brother minister. May Allah bless you. I said, I'm a I mean, I'm just saying, that's what we want to produce in our children. But we got to guard against a moment where a large chastisement may take one of our family members. Don't you and me turn on a law God. Because I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, it's difficult when God takes your mother, God takes your father, God takes your brother, God takes your sister, and you don't expect it. That's why Allah calls it in the Quran the evil accident of time. If you don't check yourself, you'll curse God or question God. Why me, Allah? What did Minister Farrakhan say in reference to himself with his suffering that Allah is blessing him to manage? What did he say? He said to us here in New York City in 2004, not why me, Allah, why not me? I'm your servant for you to try me and test me as you would like. Are you picking it up? All right, it's, it's, it's going to get a little hot a little more now. Let's move on. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, opposition is what? Necessary to prove and what? Test our faith in God. How does he know that's true? He's the most opposed man on the planet. No one is more opposed than that man. But look at his smile. Look at it. You say, is he still smiling right now? I'm going to show you in a little bit, is he still smiling right now? Smiling every day. Some of us don't want opposition. Dear Muslims, do you think that because we put on a suit and bow tie and a garment and we go out among our people in a nine-piece suit and we looking sharp and we come out and say, assalamu alaikum, and we talk about do for self, love for self, love for our people, huh? We got to get land for our people. You think everybody's in agreement with that? When Negro is in blissful heaven of relying on the white man's heaven, which is a black man's hell, you think they want to hear about doing for self when all they got to do is wake up and let the white man do for them so they can remain in the position that they're in? So you can run around talking about, I'm living a good life. Huh? Ain't going back in forth with you Negroes. No, you ain't living no good life, brothers and sisters. We live in a bad life. We live in a terrible life. But because it's so terrible and so bad, someone comes up with a song to make us happy. I'm living a good life. And you Negroes, man, trying to pull me back down. I ain't going back and forth with you. Well, you know what? The more I think of it, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, God himself, have been going back and forth with us ever since we were born. We are what the scriptures said, hard-hearted, stiff-necked, and rebellious. So while that song sounds good, it's a cliche, it's an anthem, I do want to go back and forth with you, us Negroes, 
because I want to show and prove that we are redeemable. Why? Because Elijah says we are redeemable. Minister Farrakhan is showing we can be redeemed. How do you know, Brother Hafiz? I've been redeemed. How do you know? You've been redeemed, brother. You've been redeemed, brother. Sisters, haven't you been redeemed? Yes, you have. I can't hear you. Yeah. We have been. But we also want to give a witness of life, of our redemption by God. This is serious business, brothers and sisters, because we're at a time right now the enemy is sick and tired of the nation of Islam. They're sick and tired of the last man standing, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, which is why they took a simple statement that he made about himself, not even about them, and they're going after it with full throttle, trying to get Negro traction, Negroes to stand up, Need to grow people. Speak out against Farrakhan. The same old trick. We don't like what he said. You shouldn't like what he said. Condemn him. Denounce him. I'm a little thirsty. May I have some water, please? Oh, there's no water today. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there is. Yes. I ain't got time waiting on that, brother. Just give me the bottle right here. God bless you. Let me just say this to you. Jesus died for the sins of the people, right? When I drink this water, it's going to quench your thirst. You still thirsty, ain't you? Because ain't no one man can die for the sins of the people. The sins that Jesus died for is they chose a thief over an innocent man. Are you going to choose the liars and robbers? who's robbed us from Africa, or what is called Africa, and brought us here in chains, in the holes of slave ships? Are you gonna believe the man that raped our women over and over again, one after another, gang rape? Raped men? Raped men, raped the Mandingo, made them fight each other, then raped them after they fought. And the one who won is the one they raped. That's the strong nigga. He can take it. You gonna believe in them? Who ain't never repaired the wrong for us? See, Jews don't ever want to forget Hitler. They don't ever want to forget the ovens. We should never forget our suffering. And I'm not gonna let no academia Negro make us forget it. I'm not gonna let no apologist Negro make us forget it. Because it's never been repaired. Now, you don't go out there and do nobody no wrong, but I remember what you did to my people, and God remembers. Everybody's not going to agree with us. We need to be opposed. If everybody's in agreement with us, and everybody's in agreement with you, when you go out, something is wrong with what you change. You can't get 100% agreement. Minister Farrakhan said these words at dinner. He said, this America is a kingdom, but listen, she's not the kingdom of God. So like Satan tested Jesus and offered him kingdoms, Satan today is testing black folks in prominent positions, offering them place in their kingdom. But we remind you that no matter what the satanic Jews offer you, we remind you this is not the kingdom of our God and his Christ. It's coming. And when you see Hurricane Michael, symbolic of the archangel Michael, huh? symbolic of Farrakhan, God answering him. Hmm? Hmm. When you see it take out a whole town, and they can't come back no more. I don't care what President Trump said. They ain't coming back. Like many of those countries in the Caribbean, they're not going to be restored no time soon. You ain't going to go there and have them as your playland to play with our women and our boys and our children. 
God is wiping it off the map. You think people want to hear that kind of truth? You think people want to hear the truth about 9-11? There ain't no two planes brought down them 110 stories of steel? That no heat from no future lodge can melt 110 stories of steel? For both buildings to come down like an explosion straight down? People don't want to hear that. They want to tell you, my loved ones died in 9-11. So did some of ours. We need opposition. It's necessary to test our faith in what Allah revealed to Elijah and what Minister Farrakhan is teaching. We don't need no easy come, easy go receipt of what we believe. Challenge us so we can stand up to the challenge. I like a challenge. What about you? Some of us want Islam on a luxury basis so we never grow. I've been reading the Holy Quran for the last five years and I don't understand it. Yes. And you know what I'll tell you? Because you don't want to accept what you're reading. And as soon as you accept it and be willing to share it outside of yourself, then understanding will come. You say, ooh, because op opposition is necessary to prove and test our faith in God. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says, without what? Without struggle, you cannot bring out of yourself that which God has deposited within you. So if we're living an easy life, I'm living a good life, where's the struggle? You can say, well, when I say I'm living a good life, that don't mean I'm not struggling. Ah, yes, it does. To a Negro mind, that means, hey, all struggle is ended. And that's what we want. Why do people take a hit? Why? Why? Why do they take a hit? Why do they do this? You know what that is, right? Huh? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 let me stop you. You don't understand what I was doing. Let me go get. Let me go get one of these. You understand it now, right? Why do people do that? Why? Because they don't want to struggle. They want to live a good life, but they reject struggle. That's like a mother rejecting pain in order to bring children onto the planet. Pain comes along with birth. Struggle comes along with life. When a messenger of God receives an assignment from God in person, struggle is ordained for that messenger. Rejection is ordained, but it becomes redemptive. Well, how do we think we can follow Elijah Muhammad who struggle and Minister Farrakhan who struggles and we not struggle too so that we can learn to overcome so that we can bring out of ourselves what God has deposited within each and every one of us. There's something in us, but struggle, only struggle is going to bring it out. How does a diamond come out of the earth? It struggles to come to birth. It has to go through pain. Don't you think of the diamond, which is an inanimate object, could speak? It would tell you of the pain that it goes through to look good on your finger, sister? Huh? Those of you that got diamond on your hand, you're looking at it, and brothers, we got diamonds. Diamond in your teeth. I don't know what you would put a diamond in your teeth for. But it struggled. Even the baby said it struggled. See, even she let, let us know it struggled. 